Assalamu alaikum friends. I am Takdeez A. Siddiqui with Computer Graphics for Bachelors in Computer Science course being offered by Virtual University, Government of Pakistan. Today is our 39th lecture. We have talked about various aspects of computer graphics. We have talked about curves over the past few weeks. Today we are going to talk about yet another new subject that in general is called subdivision. Let's take a look at it and let's explore this dimension of computer graphics today. Building polygonal models for surfaces. We have been talking about tessellation, the concept of division of a surface of an object into multiple polygons. Especially we have been talking about triangles and we have learnt that triangles happen to be pretty important polygon which can be made use of whenever we are talking about division of surfaces and processing surfaces for rendering and for shading. Today we shall be taking a look at this subject formally. We will try to come up with some example codes as well and we will try to look at different ways and approaches to the subject. Constructing polygonal ap approximations for surfaces is an art and there is no substitute for experience. There are people who have been working in this area for quite some time. Being able to tell that what kind of surface should be divided into which type of polygons is tricky. One gets to develop a mastery over the subject with the passage of time only. But definitely we can understand some basics that need to be kept in mind while we are attempting to do the subdivisions and division of surfaces into polygons. First of those is that keep the polygon orientations consistent and secondly make sure that when viewed from the outside all the polygons on the surface are oriented in the same direction. Keeping them consistent would mean that when we divide the surface into multiple polygons we should not have different areas of the same surface defined by using polygons which are oriented differently. We should have a consistent orientation. If we are dividing a surface into uh, multiple triangles, the orientation of those triangles should be consistent. Look at it from this angle that okay, you have divided the, sub, uh, the surface of the object into multiple uh, triangles and now you are looking at it from the outside world, you should be able to have a consistent look of the whole surface. We will be walking into the depths and details of the subject as well when we will be trying to implement this idea or, and then this, uh, this uh, notion of consistency would make much more sense. Try to get this right the first time since it is awfully painful to fix the problem later on. If you have not worked it out thoroughly that how to divide the surface into polygons which are consistently oriented, if you have uh, found some shortcuts and tried to uh, make things happen in an inconsistent manner, getting it right that would mean correcting it thereafter would really become an ordeal. Therefore, we should plan very well that how any specific surface, typically a sphere can be divided into these polygons to be precise triangles that we keep uh, encountering most of the time. Triangles are important, we have talked about this aspect implicitly as well earlier on because each of the triangles can be very very confidently said to be existing in a same plane. Since three vertices are required to define a triangle that helps the triangle to exist in a single plane and as soon as we walk into some more complex polygons for those involving four or more points, or four or more vertices, we can never say for sure that any and every figure made out of those more than three points would be existing in a single plane. But about triangles, we are confident and we are comfortable that whenever we have three vertices defining a polygon which happens to be the triangle, it would be existing in a single plane that becomes important when we are talking about processing these surfaces. Isse pehle humne shading ki baat ki hai, 
شیڈنگ کے حوالے سے ہم نے ڈیفرنٹ الگوریزمز اور ماڈلز دیکھے اینڈ دین ان دوز وی ور لوکنگ ایٹ فلنگ ایچ اینڈ ایوری ٹرائنگل دیٹ وی ڈی کمپوز آر سرفیس ان ٹو انڈیویجولی اور جب کبھی یہ پرابلم آئے گا ویل بی کنسرنڈ اباؤٹ دا نارمل آن دا آن دا ٹرائنگل آن دا ورٹیس آف دا ٹرائنگل ایز ویل سو جب آپ کسی بھی سنگل پلین میں ایگزٹ کرنے والی پالیگون کے حوالے سے بات کرتے ہیں تو نارمل ٹو دیٹ پالیگون ہیپنس ٹو بی اے نارمل ٹو ایچ آف دا ورٹیس آف دیٹ پالیگون لیکن اگر ہم اس بارے میں شور ہی نہ ہو سکیں کہ ہماری جو پالیگون ہے وہ ایک پلین میں ایگزٹ کرتی ہے یا نہیں تو وی ول نیور بی ایبل ٹو شیور کہ اس کے اوپر کس ورٹیکس پہ نارمل دوسرے ورٹیکس سے مختلف ہوگا یا کنسسٹنٹلی ایک ہی نارمل ہوگا بٹ اباؤٹ اینی پالیگون دیٹ ایگزٹ ان اے سنگل پلین وی کین کمفرٹیبلی اسٹیٹ دیٹ اے نارمل ٹو دیٹ پالیگون از اے نارمل ٹو ایچ آف دا ورٹیس آف دا پالیگون ایز ویل پریکٹیکلی وائل امپلیمنٹنگ دس آئیڈیا ایف یو یوز جی ایل اسکیل فنکشن of the open GL to reflect geometry around some axis of symmetry, then you might change the orientation with GL front face function to keep the orientation consistent. While uh, preparing a uh, surface and maneuvering, if we are uh, I mean, doing some transformations on it, at one point in time, we may require our given uh, orientation to change. And if that requirement arises, will be able to effectively make use of this function GL front face to change the orientation of our triangles and hence keep it consistent throughout our implementation. When we subdivide a surface, watch out for any non-triangular polygons and this is precisely because of the reason that we have just stated because a non-triangular polygon cannot be 100% warranted to be existing in a single plane. The three vertices of a triangle are guaranteed to lie in a plane, but any polygon with four or more vertices might not lie in a single plane. And that is what we have to be careful about. That if we are making use of some polygon other than the triangle, making use of four points, a quadrilateral, or making use of five points, making a Uh, five corner figure a pentagon we should make sure that we are really really certain about its existence in the same plane if not we can further subdivide that polygon so that each individual polygon that we have to deal with or interact with is warranted to be existing in a single plane because that makes our processing a lot easier and that is the whole uh, game we want it to be as simple as possible subdivision karne ke baad hum lowest level ke upar ja kar ke jis polygon ke sath kaam kar rahe ho uske bare mein hum sure ho that what we are uh, talking about is a polygon existing in a single plane so that we can treat it comfortably and more efficiently non planar polygons can be viewed from some orientation such that the edges cross each other and our open gl might not render such polygons correctly there is another issue that as i said if we are talking about any polygon with more than 3 vertices it may or may not exist in a single plane to agar wo ek single plane mein exist nahi kar rahi ho to fir uske bare mein aap uh, sure nahi ho sakte ki jab aap usko from side angle view karenge to you will not be having edges of it crossing each other بیکاز وہ پالیگونز جو کہ ایک دوسرے اپنے ایجز کو ہی کراس کرتی ہیں ان کے ایجز ان کے بارے میں ہم نے ارلیئر آن دیکھا تھا کہ وہ کمپلیکس ہوتی ہیں اور کمپلیکس پالیگونز ہیں ان کی ہینڈلنگ نیچرلی اسپیشل طریقے سے ہوتی ہے وی ہیو سین دیٹ ارلیئر ایز ویل تو اگر اس قسم کا سینریو ہو جائے جس کے اندر دا پالیگون دیٹ وی ہیو ڈیفائنڈ ایز ناٹ ایگزٹنگ ان دا پلین لوکنگ ایٹ فرام آؤٹ سائڈ ورڈ مے ریزلٹ ان فرام سم اینگل سچ اے ویو ان وچ پارٹس of the polygon edges of it might be crossing other edges of the same polygon and that view would not be easy to render even making use of open gl hamara maqsad ye hai ki hum consistent rakh sake apne behavior ko aur apne surfaces ke wo components jinko hum alag alag treat kar rahe hain unke bare mein hum certain ho sake aur positive ho sake ki yes when we are talking about this triangle this is a very simple triangle existing in a single plane and 
a normal on this triangle is actually a normal on each of the vertices and we can make use of the same normal whether we are talking about any one of the vertices or of the surface of the triangle. There is always a trade off between the display speed and the quality of the image. We have to accept it. There has got to be a compromise on one of the two. Agar hum bahut achhi quality ka image chahte hain, to uski display speed naturally hamper karegi. That would slow down. And if our first priority is to have great speed, a very good display speed would require us to compromise on the quality of the image. Dono chizon ko hum agar high class rakhna chahte hain, we will not be able to come up with a workable solution. Depending upon the requirement, we will have to accept one of the two being hampered. If our requirement is that we cannot have a compromise on the quality of the image, then we will have to accept that it would take more time to process it. But if we just cannot live without a more efficient performance of our display of images, then we will have to have a compromise on the quality of the image. Depending upon the requirements, we will be making one compromise or the other. जैसे आपकी एप्लीकेशन जो है उसके अंदर बाकी सब कुछ चूंकि बहुत ज्यादा हाई क्वालिटी का डिस्प्ले हो रहा है हाई क्वालिटी इमेजेस इस्तेमाल हो रहे हैं दरमियान में कहीं पे कोई एनिमेशन वाला पार्ट आता है तो उसके ऊपर भी आपको यू विल नॉट बी कॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग ऑन इट बिकॉज द एनवायरमेंट इन विच यू हैव पॉइज दैट ऑब्जेक्ट विच नीड्स टू बी एनिमेटेड वो हाई क्वालिटी पिक्चर कट कर रहा है यूल हैव टू कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन स्पीड एंड यूल हैव टू वर्क विद the detail and quality of that animation object as well. But in the other hand, if you are talking about a three-dimensional game, in which the overall speed really matters, the speed with which images and graphics are displayed, then you have to compromise on the other side and you have to accept the quality below the high quality level. Ideally, you can provide a parameter to the subdivision routines that indicates how fine a subdivision you want. And if the object is farther from the eye, you can use a coarser subdivision. The idea over here is that our routine should be written in such a manner that we specify as part of its parameters that we have fine subdivision required. So depending upon our requirement of a scene, we might be pro uh, providing with a greater uh, detail or larger number for that depth or uh, quality of subdivision. If our requirement is that uh, a coarser image can also do the job, then we will be providing accordingly a parameter that would do the job. If our requirement is that we have a lot छोटी छोटी डिविजन्स करनी हैं सरफेस की क्योंकि हमें वेरिएशन कलर की और शेड्स की बहुत ज्यादा रिक्वायर्ड है एंड वी कैन नॉट हैव अ कोर्सर लुक ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट वी कैन स्पेसिफाई दैट एज पार्ट ऑफ द पैरामीटर्स सप्लाइड टू दिस रूटीन दैट डज दिस सब डिविजन ऑफ सरफेस इन टू इससे पहले हम बात कर चुके हैं लेवल ऑफ डिटेल की जब हम ये बात कर रहे थे कि कोई ऑब्जेक्ट्स जो हैं जिनको हम ट्रांसफॉर्म करने जा रहे हैं वो कितना करीब हैं हमारे पर्सपेक्टिव में हमारे व्यू के अंदर या कितना दूर हैं उसके मुताबिक हम उनका लेवल ऑफ डिटेल कम या ज्यादा कर सकते हैं कोई ऑब्जेक्ट जो कि बहुत ज्यादा करीब हो व्यूअर के हमारे व्यू पॉइंट के जहां पर उसकी बहुत ज्यादा डिटेल्स नजर आ रही हों तो अगर वहां पर हम कॉम्प्रोमाइज कर लेते हैं क्वालिटी पे तो नेचुरली वी विल बी एबल टू सी सम जैगेडनेस इन द इमेज विच माइट नॉट बी वॉन्टेड लेकिन अगर वही ऑब्जेक्ट किसी कोने में पड़ा हुआ दिखाई दे रहा है और हमारे व्यू पॉइंट से दूर है तो उस सूरत में वी कैन लिव विद अ कोर्सर सरफेस एज वेल सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन आर रिक्वायरमेंट हम वो लेवल ऑफ डिटेल बढ़ा या घटा सकते हैं एक्चुअली वो लेवल ऑफ डिटेल इस केस में यहां पे जब हम सर्फेसिस की डिविजन uh, की बात करते हैं टू पॉलीगॉन्स तो उस सूरत में नंबर ऑफ पॉलीगॉन्स यूज टू डिस्क्राइब अ स्पेसिफिक सर्फेस उस पर मंतज होता है कि अगर हमारी रिक्वायरमेंट है कि हमने बहुत ज्यादा फाइनल डिटेल्स देनी है तो हमें बहुत ग्रेटर uh, डेप्थ में जाना होगा वाइल डिवाइडिंग द सर्फेस इन टू पॉलीगॉन्स और अगर हमें बहुत ज्यादा डिटेल्स रिक्वायर्ड नहीं है तो वी कैन लिव विद ओनली अ फ्यू पॉलीगॉन्स 
defining or uh, approximating the whole surface. Also when you subdivide use large polygons where the surface is relatively flat and small polygons in the regions of high curvature. Basic idea is again the same that the area which is flatter that can be maybe shown as a single polygon. But if we are walking towards the edges which are curving in case of a sphere maybe then we require that area to be dealt with quite delicately and that would be an area where making use of smaller size polygons would be advisable. Because jitni chote polygons ka size hum rakhenge, is case mein agar hum uh, example leke chal rahe hain uh, triangles ki to usi ko le lije. To agar towards edges and contours where we have the curvature of the object defined or the curved part of the surface defined, there we would be requiring more variation in terms of shades and lights that we play with. To humare paas zyada room hoga to come up with different uh, varied shading schemes near the curves which is all the more required. Agar aap kisi aise object ki baat kar rahe hain jiska front jo hai bilkul ek flat surface hai aur edges jo hain wo thode curve hue hain to flat surface wala part jo hai uske andar to typically under normal circumstances ek jaisa shade aa raha hoga. That same shading that in the larger portion of that flat area that can be dealt with using a single polygon. Ek badi si triangle aap wahan pe bana lijiye. But the areas around that flat surface which are tending towards the curvature that would require some smaller subdivisions. So depending upon our requirement we can mix and match larger and smaller polygons in the same surface as well. Of course we will have to plan it well and we will have to deal with each on merit. For high quality images it is a good idea to subdivide more on the solute edges than the interior part. The salute edges are those that appear to be more prominent in the image. They occur where the normal vectors are perpendicular to the vector from the surface to the viewpoint and that is when their vector dot product happens to be 0. This we already know from our prior knowledge. So if we talk about an angle between the normal vector on the surface and the vector that is formed from the surface to the viewpoint or from viewpoint to the surface if these two vectors are perpendicular to each other and that would mean that this is the area which is the salute edge and that area should be dealt with carefully. We should have greater detail of uh, subdivision performed for this area. Try to avoid T intersections in your models as is shown in the next figure that we see. The figure on the left that is showing a T intersection. While performing the subdivision we should avoid this kind of a division where we have one bigger triangle and two smaller triangles defining this part of the surface in such a manner that we have a T intersection shown. Much rather we would be more comfortable if we are able to divide it into four different triangles in the manner shown on the right and you will be able to appreciate the effect that we get of height and depth when we do that. Those T intersections actually are a compromise on that visual aspect as well. So these should be avoided. As shown there is no guarantee that the line segments AB and BC lie on exactly the same pixels as the segment AC. So depending upon orientation and depending upon the angle from which we view the object or this part of the surface of the object, we can, we can uh, never say that the two subsections of the same segment like if the segment is AC, the two parts of it AB and BC, they would be exactly overlapping the same when we actually end up with the desired form of division because in that desired form of division as I said that we are going to have more triangles and they are going to be poised in such a manner that there would not be a T intersection formed. So uh, that would be a compromise but nevertheless avoiding it would help us process the surface in a more natural, uh, natural looking manner. Sometimes the two segments would coincide with the native original segment AC, AB and BC may coincide but 
at others they may not and that would depend upon how the orientation of the object and uh, angle while transforming it in three dimensional space may appear. And this can cause some cracks to appear intermittently in the surface if we have such T intersections found in our subdivisions. So in order to avoid those cracks or gaps we should make use of a division that does not involve such T intersections. If you are constructing closed figure then make sure to use exactly the same number of coordinates at the beginning and end of a closed loop or otherwise you can get some gaps and cracks due to the numerical round off. What I mean by that would be clear when we look at the next example uh, in exemplary code that we are going to talk about. This code we are going to take for example in order to uh, elaborate what we are talking about over here that if we are talking about some closed surface then we better have exactly the same number of coordinates at the beginning and at the end of the closed loop. If the number of coordinates are inconsistent then of course we will be making use of some rounding off some mathematics and that mathematics might deal with this situ uh, situation quite brutally and might not be able to generate the results that we would be anticipating or looking forward to having. We are going to take a look at some two dimensional example of uh, a bad code. This is an example of a bad code not an exemplary example. So the code is not exemplary it is being used for example only. We start by defining pi with its typical value 3.1415.9265. As you know that uh, this is not the complete Prussian depending upon the Prussian that we are using we can have a different value and we define another constant as edges and we give it value 30. In the first part of the code tries to draw a circle. So here what we are doing is we are making use of GL begin and treating certain set of vertices as GL line strip. So you start by saying GL begin GL line strip for i is equal to 0 i less than equal to edges increment i by 1 each time and then we have GL vertex 2f and the parameters are cos of 2 pi i divided by edges. The second parameter is sine of 2 pi i divided by edges. And you would recall that when we make use of GL line strip, what we mean is that all the vertices would be treated as coupled in the form of two vertices each, and two consecutive vertices would be made use of to draw a line segment and over here what we are trying to do is that draw such line segments that would ultimately join hands together to form a complete circle right. But keep in mind that area that is being used as the angle uh, calculating area for cos and sine. We are talking about cos of 2 times pi times i over edges for different values of i see what you will be able to get as a result of this computation 2 pi i over edges i is going to vary from 0 to its maximum value which is equal to edges which we have defined to be equal to 30. So in effect what we are trying to do over here is that come up with 30 line segments which should draw uh, drawn from uh, end to end connected with each other and ultimately resulting in a figure that looks like a circle GL end. The edges meet exactly only if your machine manages to calculate the sine and cosine of 0 and that of 2 pi times edges divided by edges equal to 0 and gets exactly the same value. 
So if we are able to warranty that cosine of 0 and that of 2 pi times edges divided by edges would be equal to the same only then we will be able to get desired results. To correct the code make sure that when i equals edges you use 0 for the sign and cosine instead of 2 times pi times edges over edges. So relying on our machine to do that for us can be hazardous at times because if rounding off results in a value which is not desirable or which is not as anticipated or expected we might not be able to get consistent results because when we are talking about line segments drawn from end to end joining hands with each other and finally jo hamara last segment hai us uska jo jo hame last point milta hai usko humne milana hai pehle point ke sath to agar hamare paas jo value calculate ho ke aa rahi hai wo wo wali value nahi banti jo ki hamare starting point ki ya vertex ki hai to naturally yahan par dono line segments meet nahi karenge and because of that there would be a gap left over there and that gap definitely is not what we want or what we desire. So in order to overcome such problems we should be very specific and clear about these uh, specifications especially for the closed surfaces or closed figures or we can use GL line loop instead of GL line strip and change the loop termination condition with I less than edges. So instead of using GL line strip which deals with all our uh, vertices as line segments and draws them from end to end we can make use of GL line loop which inherently knows that the last of the vertices would be defining the last segment which needs to be connected to the very first one. So that part would be automatically taken care of if we make use of GL line loop and we will be able to get a consistent complete loop. Now we are going to talk about another example and that is that of drawing icosahedron. The code that we are going to look at concerns the vertices of a regular icosahedron which is a platonic solid composed of 20 faces that span 12 vertices each face of which is an equilateral triangle. An icosahedron can be considered a rough approximation for a sphere. Example 1 the first one that we are going to talk about defines the vertices and triangles making up an icosahedron and then draws that icosahedron. We are looking at a figure of the same. So now you can visualize what we are talking about. A figure comprising of 20 of such triangles which have been poised in such a manner that they form a figure which is a rough approximation of a sphere. Well, of course each of those triangles that we have decomposed it into is a planar triangle so exists in its own plane therefore uh, uh, kisi bhi triangle ki surface ke baare mein aap ye nahi keh sakte ki wo khud se curved hai ya space ke andar poised hai that is existing in a uh, individual independent plane of its own and that is uh, why we call it a rough approximation of the sphere otherwise agar hum uh, any triangles ko bhi curve hone ki ijazat de denge to phir to actually it would be a better approximation of uh, the sphere but we will be taking a look at uh, methods of coming up with a better approximation of the sphere as well but this is where we start off so we'll be developing or building a regular icosahedron making use of 20 faces and 12 vertices this is the code we are starting off by two magical definitions first we say define x with a floating value 0. 0.5257311121 nine one three three six zero six and the other one is definition for z define z as zero point eight five zero six five zero eight zero eight three five two zero three nine nine three two what's so special about these two values you'll get to know pretty shortly static gl float v data a two dimensional array twelve by three and that equals the values that are listed below. We are assigning minus x comma 0, 0.0 comma z as the first value. 
look at the first four values they've got all variations of x and z not in magnitude sirf sign ki change kar rahe hain hum minus x aur z pehle dusre mein x aur z teesre mein dekhiye minus x and minus z aur chauthe mein x and minus z lekin in charon mein y is being kept as 0.0 look at the next four these values have all x values set to 0.0 and the next four have z values set to 0.0 so we have defined v data of 12 by 3 12 vertices that we talked about static gl unit t indices we are going to have 20 by 3 array t indices populated with the values that are appearing on your screens right now this code is available with you in your notes so making use of these values populating into these two arrays we move on by declaring an integer i gl begin gl triangles for i is equal to 0 i less than 20 we increment i by 1 each time we start off by some color information and this is the part where you can specify what color you want to give to a specific triangle that we would be drawing at that point in time and then next three lines about gl vertex 3 fv which are being passed ampersand v data of t indices of i 0 0 i 1 0 and i 2 0 these three values would be made use of to build triangle and we are going to build 20 of these the strange numbers x and z they are chosen so that the distance from the origin to any of the vertices of the icosahedron is 1.0 what we wanted was that our icosahedron should be built in such a manner that we have exactly 1 as the distance between the origin and any of the vertices of the uh, icosahedron since we are talking about a regular shape so presume hum yahi kar rahe hain that the center of this figure this uh, approximation of sphere the icosahedron would be coinciding with the origin and therefore we have chosen those specific values for x and z so that we are able to ensure that the distance of any of the vertices from the origin would be maintained as 1 the v data array contains the 12 vertices where zeroth vertex is minus m percent xgr 0.0 m percent zgr and the first is x 0.0 z and so on and the array t indices tells how to link the vertices to make triangles and that's what we want to do as i said earlier we're going to make use of these 12 vertices to come up with 20 faces the 20 triangles for example the first triangle is made from the zeroth fourth and the first vertex and if you make the vertices for triangles in the order given all the triangles have the same orientation and this is something that we initially mentioned as well that while we will be at it we'll try to keep the orientation consistent orientation for all the triangles that we decompose our surface into would be kept consistent the line that mentions color information that should be replaced by a command that sets the color of the ith face or the ith triangle for that matter so whichever color we want to give a specific triangle that we can specify in that area just below the gl begin note one thing that in all the examples you should probably save the calculated vertex and normal coordinates to avoid repetition this can be done using your own data structures or by constructing some display lists basic idea is to be able to process things efficiently so anything and everything that can be made use of again and again must be calculated once and kept somewhere safe so that it can be made use of whenever required so if you are talking about a uh, surface being decomposed or divided into triangles and triangles that are planar polygons that means each one of those exists in a plane of its own then definitely uh, saving a normal to this would be coming handy whenever we require normal to any of the vertices of that triangle 
that same value would be required to be used and that can be calculated once and kept for use later on and that is where we are going to save some processing time which is very important and precious to us. Calculating normal vectors for a surface that is the next thing that we need to do. If a surface is to be lit you need to supply the vector normal to, the, uh, to that surface. Calculating the normalized cross product of two vectors on that surface provides us the normal vector. We have done this before for any specific triangle. So this is the time where you apply that knowledge to compute, to come up with a surface normal for any of the triangles that would be forming our icosahedron. With the flat surfaces of an icosahedron, all three vertices defining a surface have the same normal vector. In this case, the normal needs to be specified only once. This is where we save our processing time. Let us take a look at another example, example number 2. This is for generating normal vectors for a surface. We start off with GL float D1, an array of 3 elements, D2, another array of 3 elements and norm 3, another array of 3 elements. For J is equal to 0, J less than 3, we increment J each time by 1, D1 of J equals V data of T indices of I0 J minus V data of T indices of I1 J. Similarly, we compute D2 of J as V data of T indices of I1 J minus V data of T indices of I2 J. So, what we have done is we have computed the difference between the first and the second vertex and come up with the vector information for that. Having computed those two, we will be able to compute the normal on that vertex and that normal can be stored in the third array. Norm cross prod D1, D2, norm. So that is how we will be taking the cross product of the D1 and D2 and which would be stored as a normal in the third parameter past norm. GL normal 3FV of norm that would convert it. The function norm cross prod produces the normalized cross product of two vectors as is shown in the next example. Third example, example 3 is for calculating the normalized cross product of the two vectors and this would be made use of in the previous one and this is given as void normalize float v of 3 gl float d equals square root of v of 0 times v of 0 so v of 0 squared plus v of 1 times v of 1 which means v of 1 squared plus v of 2 times v of 2 which is v of 2 squared. So recall our basic uh, discussion on the same topic we are talking about calculation of the normal and we are adding squares of the coordinates. So if d equals 0, 0.0 then we give error message saying that 0 length vector and return otherwise what we do is proceed with the normalization procedure which says v of 0 divided, uh, divided by d is stored back in v of 0, v of 1 equals v of 1 divided by d and similarly v of 2 equals v of 2 divided by d. Void norm cross prod of float v1 of 3, float v2 of 3, float out of 3. We define gl int i comma j and then we proceed with gl float length definition and then we say out of 0 equals v1 of 1 times v2 of 2 minus v1 of 2 times v2 of 1. Also refer back to our discussion again you will be able to make sense out of this part of the code out of 1 equals v1 of 2 times v2 of 0 minus v1 of 0 times v2 of 2. Out of 2 equals v1 of 0 times v2 of 1 minus v1 of 1 times v2 of 0. If you go back to our theoretical discussion make use of x, y and z in place of 0, 1 and 2 and then we call normalize out and that does the job. If you are using an icosahedron as an approximation of a shaded sphere, 
then you will want to use normal vectors that are perpendicular to the true surface of the sphere rather than being perpendicular to the faces. Depending upon our requirement, if the requirement is that the icosahedron would be used in order to approximate the surface of a sphere, then of course the one that we have talked about is a very, very rough or coarse estimation or approximation. In order to come up with the one that would suffice the requirements of an approximation, we would not be interested in finding normals to each of the faces of that icosahedron, but we would be interested in normals to the surface of that sphere. Since the icosahedron vertex data is for an icosahedron of radius 1, the normal and vertex data is identical. Here is the code that would draw an icosahedral approximation of a smoothly shaded sphere. Look at this code. GL begin of GL triangles for i is equal to 0, i less than 20, i plus plus. GL normal 3FV of ampersand V data of T indices of i 0, 0. Second, GL vertex 3FV of ampersand V data of T indices of i 0, 0. And GL normal 3FV of ampersand V data of T indices of i 1, 0. And similarly, GL vertex 3FV of ampersand V data of T indices of i 1, 0. Similarly, we are going to make calls to GL normal 3FV and GL vertex 3FV for ampersand V data of T indices of I 2, 0. Here we end. Now, improving on this model, that would require us to do a little more. And what is that little more? That of course would be dividing our approximations, the triangles that we have used to come up with the approximation of this affair into further smaller triangles. So that we are able to come up with a better approximation of the sphere that we want. A 20 sided approximation of a sphere does not look good unless the image of the sphere on the screen is quite small. But there is an easy way out to increase the accuracy of the approximation that I have already spelled that is to subdivide those triangles. But here the idea is that if requirement is such that the object or the sphere that we are talking about that we want to approximate using this method is going to appear far away from the point of view where we are viewing the scene from. If it is a distant object, then definitely we do not require a lot of effort to be put in to define the surface of this sphere because it would really not matter if it is appearing at a distance that whether we have come up with a 20 faced uh, approximation or an 80 faced approximation. So, agar to level of detail ke upar compromise ho sakta hai, we can uh, live with smaller number of uh, triangles approximating the surface, let us do that. Let us not waste our uh, performance and let us gain on efficiency. Lekin agar requirement aise hai ke sphere ne kareeb a jana hai aur visible ho jayega ke iske upar jo uh, surface hai wo kins, kis tarah ki kitni triangles ke zariye se uh, divide karke dikhai gai hai, then definitely it would become a problem. So, that would be a time when we would require to add greater detail. Imagine the icosahedron is inscribed in a sphere and then subdivide the triangles as we are going to show in the next figure. Look at this. The icosahedron that we started off with is appearing on the leftmost. In the next picture, we have got more subdivisions walking in. Agar aap thoda sa gaur karein, to aapko dikhai de jayega ki jo humari start jisse humne kiya tha, 20 faces wali jo icosahedron hai, usi ki triangles ko humne further subdivide kiya hai. You take any of the triangles, maybe jo aapko saamne bright triangles do dikhai de rahi hai, unme se left wali ko aap le lije, you will be able to spot that bigger triangle in the middle figure as well. Lekin vaha aapko ye dikhai dega ki wo triangle further चार ट्रायंगल्स में हमने डिवाइड कर दिए और न सिर्फ ये बल्कि ऐसा करने के साथ ही हमने चूंकि प्रिज्यूम किया था कि इसको हम अज्यूम uh, करते हैं एज इफ वी हैव इंस्क्राइब्ड दिस आइकोसाहेड्रॉन इन अ सफेयर तो हमने उसके अंदर हवा भी भर दी है थोड़ा इन्फ्लेट भी कर दिया ताकि ये सरफेस टुवर्ड्स सफेयर्स सरफेस व्हिच वुड बी अ परफेक्टली स्मूथ सरफेस उसकी तरफ इन्फ्लेट हो जाए 
اب اس انفلیشن سے آپ کو ان تمام ٹرائنگلس کی جو کہ اس ایک ٹرائنگل کو ہم نے ڈیوائڈ کر کے بنائی ہیں ان کی اورینٹیشن ڈفرنٹ کر کے دکھا رہا ہے دیٹ دیز ہیو بین ایز ایف دیو بین پش ٹوڈ سرفیس آف دا سفیئر فرام ود ان ویری انٹرسٹنگ ایچ آف دا ٹرائنگلس دیٹ وی میڈ یوز آف ان دا فرسٹ ایگزامپل دا ٹوینٹی فیسٹ آئی کا سی ڈرون دیٹ از ناؤ بینگ سب ڈیوائڈیڈ ایچ ون آف دا ٹرائنگلس از بینگ سب ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو فور مور اینڈ دس ٹوینٹی ٹائمس فور وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ہیو ایٹی ٹرائنگلس اپروکسیمیٹنگ دا سیم سفیئر دیٹ واز بینگ اپروکسیمیٹڈ یوزنگ ٹوینٹی فیسز ارلیئر آن بٹ نائی یو سی دیٹ دس ٹوینٹی فیسٹ اپروکسیمیشن از گونگ اے بیٹر سفیئر لائک لک دین دا فرسٹ ون فرسٹ ون واز پریٹی کورس پریٹی رف لیکن اس کو بھی ہم نے کہا کہ جہاں پہ ہمارے پاس لیول آف ڈیٹیل جو ہے اس کو کم کرنے سے ویژولی ہم اپنی ایفیکٹ کو خراب نہیں کر رہے امپیکٹ اس کا جو ہمیں ریکوائرڈ ہے وہ مل رہا ہے ویل میک یوز آف اٹ لیکن جو ہی اس سفیر کو قریب لانا ہے اور اس کو کچھ بہتر طور پہ شیڈ دکھانا ہے ویل ہیو ٹو ڈو مور ویل ہیو ٹو ڈو مور ورک اور اگر آپ اس کے مزید دائیں طرف دیکھیں تو آپ کو پھر اسی اپروکسیمیشن کی ایک اور مینیفیسٹیشن نظر آئے گی ہیئر وی ہیو گون اے لٹل فردر ناؤ اینڈ ایچ ون آف دا اسمالر ٹرائنگلس اپیئرنگ ان دا مڈل فگر ہیز اگین بن سب ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو فور مور جو رائٹ موسٹ فگر ہے دیٹ از پرابلی دا بیسٹ اپروکسیمیشن آف اے سفیئر سو فار دیٹ وی ہیو سین اس میں ہم نے کیا کیا کہ مڈل والی جو ٹرائنگل تھی ان کے اندر ہر ایک ٹرائنگل کو پھر ہم نے مزید چار میں سب ڈیوائڈ کر دیا اینڈ دیٹ ہیز ریزلٹڈ ان دس فگر وچ از میکنگ یوز آف ہاؤ مینی ایٹی ٹائمز فور وڈ بی تھری ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹوینٹی ٹرائنگلس سو مور دا ٹرائنگلس بیٹر دا اپروکسیمیشن لیس دا ٹرائنگلس کورسر دا اپروکسیمیشن نیو ورٹس لائی سلائٹلی ان سائڈ دا سفیئر سو وی پش دیم ٹو دا سرفیس بائی نارملائزنگ دیم دا تھری آبجیکٹس شون ان دا فگر دے یوز ٹوینٹی ایٹی اینڈ ون ٹوینٹی اپروکسیمیٹنگ ٹرائنگلس ریسپیکٹولی Example 4 performs a single subdivision creating an 80 sided spherical approximation. Let's take a look at this code. Void draw triangle. The first part is about drawing of the triangle. Float point of E1, comma float point of E2, comma float point of E3. GL begin of GL triangles. GL normal 3FV of V1. GL vertex 3FV of V1. GL normal 3FV of V2, GL vertex 3FV of V2, and similarly GL normal 3FV of V3 and GL vertex 3FV of V3. And here we end. Void subdivide float pointer V1, float pointer V2, float pointer V3. Subdivide is defined as GL float V12 of 3, V23 of 3, and V31 of 3. We have taken the specific ones, those that would be actually defining the triangle that we want to target. GL int i, for i is equal to 0 to i less than 3, we increment i by 1 each time and we say v12 of i equals v1 of i plus v2 of i. And similarly, v23 of i is equal to v2 of i plus v3 of i and v31 of i is equal to v3 of i plus v1 of i. And then comes the normalization part. We say normalize v12, normalize v23, normalize v31. Then draw triangle V1, V12, V31. Draw triangle V2, V23, V12. Draw triangle V3, V31, V23. And draw triangle V12, V23, V31. The four triangles that we wanted to subdivide our prior triangle into, those have been drawn now. For i is equal to 0 to i less than 20, increment i by 1 each time. And subdivide is called for ampersand v data of t indices of i00, i10, and i20. So folks, you have seen how we can divide a surface into triangles. And then, depending upon the requirement, depending upon the level of detail desired or required for a specific scene, we can increase that level as well. The number of triangles defining or approximating a surface, that can be increased. And depending upon what we need, we can go to any limit. But as I said earlier as well, we will be trying to come up with a routine 
for this subdivision process that makes use of a parameter value that tells it to what extent we want it to go in terms of subdividing. अगर हमारी requirement ये है कि हम subdivision जो है वो से वो वहीं उसी level तक करें जो कि twenty faces में एक हमारे सफेद को approximate कर देती है, fine, we pass it on the accordingly value. Let's say हम इसको depth level कह देते हैं, हम इसे कहते हैं कि हमें level zero चाहिए। अगर हमें इससे एक लेवल ज्यादा चाहिए हम लेवल वन स्पेसिफाई कर देते हैं डेप्थ का एंड दैट वुड मीन कि वी हैव टू गो फर्दर और इन ट्वेंटी फेसेस को हमने फर्दर सब डिवाइड करना है इनटू फोर ईच कमिंग अप विद एटी फेसेस इफ वी स्पेसिफाई येट अनदर ग्रेटर डेप्थ लेवल वी मे कम अप विद थ्री हंड्रेड सो फोर्थ सो आर आर आइडिया वुड बी टू डिवेलप सच ए रूटीन विच कैन बी जेनेरिकली यूज एक दफा बना लें जो रिक्वायरमेंट हो उसके मुताबिक उसे पैरामीटर्स पास करें एंड इट शुड बिहेव अकॉर्डिंगली रादर देन कि जी हम कोर्सर uh, अप्रोक्सीमेशन के लिए डिफरेंट रूटीन बना के रखें और फाइनल अप्रोक्सीमेशन के लिए डिफरेंट बना के रखें सो द सेम रूटीन शुड वर्क फॉर ऑल डिफरेंट सिनेरियोज दैट वी मे रिक्वायर नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज मेकिंग यूज ऑफ अ स्लाइट मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ दिस लास्ट वन विच इज रिकर्सिवली सब डिवाइडिंग द ट्राइंगल्स फॉर अ प्रॉपर डेथ दिस पार्ट यू विल बी एबल टू टेक अ लुक एट from your notes and i would recommend you to go through this example and the next one as well i hope that you will be able to make sense out of these and will be able to appreciate that generic routine which can be made use of for specifying the depth level and coming up with desired rec- results accordingly as and when required so folks we have talked about this subdivision today we have effectively divided surface of a sphere into multiple faces to start with a very coarse approximation using a 20 faced icosahedron and then gradually increasing the level of approximation by adding to the number of triangles that are used to approximate the surface and we saw how we can come up with better figure or better approximation of sphere and this is what we can make use of at one point in time or the other depending upon the requirement of the scene we'll be coming up with some more interesting discussion next time aaj hum yahan tak hi rakhte hain ijazat dijiyega fi amanullah